Sorry about that, and a bit of a meeting there. Uh, let's back up a little bit now, let's back up a bit. Let's have, let's have a look at... Uh, Let's have a look at the weighing. Right, Joshua for weighing. What did, what were he wearing at the weighing? <laughs> I mean, that picture is going to go down now, isn't it? In uh, what's the word? It's good. Going to go down as legend. Ruiz there with headband on that says Ruiz on. Stood there, just an average-looking guy. Joshua there, all ripped up and chiselled. Looks like he's made out of marble. You know, six and a half inches taller, longer reach, younger. Is he younger? I think he's younger. He's got all, oh, oh he looks younger, doesn't he? He's, he's got all the advantages, he's got the zone behind him. He's there in his Beats headphones and Under Armour boxer shorts and everybody's all there with Under Armour. He's got the private jet parked at Kennedy Airport that's been ferrying him to Miami and I'm going to come to Miami in a bit you know he's got everything going, he's got everything going for him Joshua right let, let me tell you this he got spanked he's there with power beats headphones on and he got spanked now that to me is cringe all that all them blue chip companies but he said it's not about money, but why, have you, why don't you give it all to charity then, like Tyson Fury gives seven million away, so he says. Give it all to charity, uh, Joshua. Give it all to charity. If it's not about money, why are you flying around in a private jet? Why don't you fly economy? Stay humble. I mean, this guy here, he's, he's walking about, right? We're an entourage of fucking 26 people. 26 people, right? All them people all want to be paid. They've all got to be paid. You don't do it out of the goodness of your heart. Now, fair enough, it's all right jetting around the world in a private jet that somebody's got to pay for. Things like that get stopped. Now, what happens when Joshua has to go on a normal aeroplane with the rest of us mere mortals? What's he going to do then? Say, stay humble. Stay humble. You know, Joshua is on tarmac with his private fucking jet, right? And then he comes to interview and it's like, look, this doesn't mean anything unless you're right with right people and be humble. And I'm humble, I'm blessed. Whereas Floyd Mayweather is just like that on tarmac, isn't it? Look at me, I'm the money team with my private jet. I own that outright. Fuck you. He's like that. Well, Joshua's like that, but he's trying to come across as PR friendly, isn't he? Well, fuck you with your private fucking jet. You got your ass kicked. You know, beats. You know what, right? I watched the Dazone, the Dazone bit of it. And you've got Joshua, right? On the adverts between the round, he's getting his ass kicked by Andy Ruiz. And the adverts are coming up, or commercials in America, they call it. And he's getting smashed to fucking bits. But yet he's coming up in these adverts. For power beats, headphones and all this crap, load of nonsense. Unbelievable. But listen, at the end of the day, right, Joshua is another Michael Grant, isn't he? Do you remember Michael Grant who fought Lennox Lewis? What happened to him? What happened to him? Walking around in his tight t-shirt, what happened to him? He got his fucking battered, didn't he? That's what happened to him. But what makes it more special is it's Andy Ruiz that's done him. Andy Ruiz, the guy that spent more, most of his life in a Taco Bell. You know what I mean? Now, the inquest's going to be like this. This is how the inquest's going to go. Joshua is going to be in training this week. Mark my word. He won't be going away. Oh, no, 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 no. He won't be flying off to Dubai to live the life, who's to say they're even going to have him back over there? Now he's a loser. He won't be flying off to Dubai. What he'll do, he'll come down here, at EIS, this week, and he'll get back on it, and he'll want to put it right. Because he's the consummate professional, isn't he, Eddie Young keeps telling us. And then they can put the, then the matchroom PR team are going to go into full 
Monger mode. World of Mongery mode. You're going to have Frank Smith, Anthony Lever. They're going to call all the troops together. 78 TV Sports. Hatman Strikes Back. Sporting Icons. They're going to call all them together. And then they're going to put the messages out to all the trolls. And all them who are on ticket deals. They're going to go full on with Anthony Joshua. He weren't feeling right and... He didn't, he, he didn't want to be in America and he, he just wasn't there on the night and setbacks paved the way for comebacks and even Ali got beat, yeah, against Fraser, his first defeat. That's what you're going to get. Now, and all this has done, it's made Joseph Parker look good on it really because he beat Ruiz, didn't he? He beat him. Styles make fights though, don't they? That's a cliche but it's true, isn't it? Could you imagine what Tyson Fury would have done to Andy Ruiz? Could you imagine what Wilder would do? Could you imagine what they'd do to Joshua? Hey, could you imagine if the Joshua turned up there for Andy Ruiz? It'd be a slaughter, wouldn't it? It'd be a fucking slaughter. Now, the blame game. First you're angry, then you're upset, then you look for somebody to blame, don't you? Who is to blame for this? Is it Joshua? Glenn McCraw has put a tweet out saying, why don't you tell, them all, tell fans what happened in Miami? Well, that's for Joshua to tell, isn't it? But if you look above where I'm sat now, in the corner of my screen, ping, can you see that in the corner? That's an Audemars watch. That's Anthony Joshua's watch that got robbed off him in a carjacking. 2 a.m. Saturday night, the Saturday before he fought for Povetkin. The training finished that morning, that's it, they get a week off then. So he's in Battersea, 2am, Saturday night, with his boys, in his Range Rover, and he got carjacked. They took his watch, with a machete to his head. He got paid out though by insurance, didn't he? 350 grand watch. People can say, Porky, how did you end up with a picture at watch? Well, the watch, we're doing the rounds, want it, for sale. The people who, obviously, you know, I used to be, I'm not saying a big cheese, but... Somebody sent it me, I'm not going to say who sent it me, but you know, I'd like to think that I do know a little bit about jewellery and watches and things like that, so, and I do still have people in that in that industry who ring me all the time for watches, but I wouldn't have been able to afford that watch while it was being punted out for anywhere, and I won't get involved with anything stolen, because that's not what I'm about, but that's Joshua's watch, now, there's only two in where him and Vladimir have got them. How I look at it is this, we can all sit there taking freebies, like Joshua does, free private jets, free holidays in Dubai, that big hotel in middle at sea, it looks like a shipping sale. Uh, even I get freebies, look. Night Cortez. Cheers for them, Dan. <laughs> Keep on trucking, Dan. Magic R. Morris. This is how I look at it, right? The game is over, you've been found out. But how did it even get to this? How did we get fooled for so long? How? I'll tell you why. They built the, the match room, it's a well oiled machine. They manufactured something there, and we all fell for it, didn't we? We all fell for it. We fell for Olympic medal, didn't we? Where were Olympics at? Fucking London. He only beat one of them four guys, and that was a Chinaman, wasn't it? And he was useless anyway. He was a useless dosser. The other three guys, Joshua got beat against. Go and watch the Olympics. Go and watch the cut. Each win that Joshua had in the Olympics, complaints were put in on every single one. But you don't think that we're going to let all these other countries get away with it in the Olympics every year at boxing, and, and, and we're not going to get away with it. I cheered for him, me. But as it's unfolded, it's all, come, it's, all, it's all become a bit of a fraud, hasn't it? You know, saying that he lives in his mum's council house and all that. It's rubbish. He owns a flat down here in Sheffield, the AIS, and he owns other properties. I don't want to hear bullshit like that. Oh, I'm being humble. I live in a council house with my mum. I'm humble. What? Are you having a laugh? People actually believe all that crap. Yeah, I just eat fruit. Be big and strong, you'll grow up like AJ. Well... It's amazing, isn't it? And I'm not saying that he's on anything, but since he joined the VADA testing, he's not looked so good, has he? You never know, do you? But it is what it is, isn't it? Shout out to Frank Smith at Matchroom. What I used to do, Frank, when I was 15, I used to go up. But 
After a while, you realise that you can damage skin. So what you do when you get them, Frank, you pull it. If you pull it, you don't uh, damage your skin. And another thing, another thing I found out. Oxy 10 don't kill them, it just burns your skin. Use toothpaste and it brings it all into a head. Do that, but you might be called Colonel Custard for a few days, Frank, but then what you do then, you get a pin and you poke it into the zit and then you pull it and then you don't leave a pocket mark on your face. Because if you do it the other way, you end up with a face like a bag of spanners, like a bag of nails, a bit like Callum Smith. When Callum Smith gets a spot, he can't wait to kill it. You've got to let it come out naturally. Be natural, like I said, and then you don't, and you end up like Porky, then we know scars on your face. Looking a million dollars, 50 year old next year, not bad, eh? <laughs> cringe. Hashtag cringe, I'm getting like stig, aren't I? So we spoke about Michael Grant, did we speak about Dillian White? Well, Dillian White, let me tell you this, right? He's got to be sat at home like this. And his brother, eh? His brother, old uh, Luther Vandross, ping, looking to the corner of the screen. Sorry, I didn't mean that. His brother, Dean White, aka Baby Ting, you know the guy who has problems saying the word thing? He calls it Ting. Is that a problem with his T's or his H's? I'm not sure. But he's a good boxing man, Dean White, and he loves a bit of banter, but. This is how I look at it. Dillian White's got to have been listening to wrong people, and I'm gonna re I I'm gonna go on record and say that Dillian's probably been listening to Luther, and Luther's probably said to him, "Listen, Dillian, we've got Eddie Earn here. He's got Wembley booked, and uh, we can ask for millions." And Eddie called the bluff, didn't he? And he's left them hanging, and now, well. Dillian, if he wants a world title, he's got to get in bed with Al Heyman, hasn't he? And come on, Dillian White beats Ruiz, doesn't he? Does he beat Wilder? I think it's a 50-50. Does he beat Fury? Could be a 50-50. I'd say that's a 58-42 in Fury's favour. Depends what Fury turns up, doesn't it? The Fury that beat John Dermott the first time, if that Fury turns up, Dillian ices him. Dillian's supposed to have done well against him in sparring, so who knows? As far as I'm concerned, Dillian White, he'd have beat Joshua if his shoulder didn't go. So he has to be respected, but he's not fought for a European title yet, or a world title. And then world title belts, they look further away now than ever, don't they? Certainly not going to be this year, is it? And I very much doubt it'll be next year, and Dillian White may never fight for a world title now. How crazy is that? Eddie Hearn's not delivered for him, has he? Because he's based everything around Joshua. He's not delivered for Kell Brook, has he? What's he delivered for Callum Smith, another world champion? What's he doing? Yeah, he got him in Super 6 or whatever it was called. WBSS, Super 8, whatever they want to call it. But he beat a shot George Groves and who else has Callum Smith beat? He just battered a middleweight and the other day a shot middleweight. What has he done for Callum Smith? Callum's not bothered, he's got Brewsters. He's got millions. Sorry, Nicola. Bing! Nicola, when I go bing, it means put a picture in corner. Alright, I'll send you a memo. Like you sent me one saying you took password off me again on Twitter. Hashtag greetings. But, er. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is what it is, isn't it? But I get carried away on Twitter, don't I? So she's kicked me off again. So I've been put in my place. But I want to know when Fleet Street are going to release all these Joshua stories that they've got. I'm not going to say which journalist it was, but there's a pile this eye on him. And I want to know when all them are going to be released. I want to know when they're going to release the Joshua story about the carjacking the week before the Povetkin fight, because they didn't want them blue chip companies knowing about that, did they? Hey, I want to know when they're going to release that. That's what I want to know. And I also want to know when they're going to release that about why he denied that he got that bird pregnant and she had a kid to him. 
That's what I want to know. Why he denied it. And they didn't want it coming out that she were a pole dancer and that he goes to lap dancing clubs and all that. Why? He's a young man. A young, good-looking man with a good physique, with millions in bank and loads of hangers on. Of course he's going to go to a lap dancing club. It's what you're supposed to do, in it, when you're an heavyweight champion of the world? You're supposed to be the baddest man on the planet. That's what you do. That's what you do. That's what Mike Tyson did. That's what uh, Sonny Liston did. Do you know what I mean? And I don't doubt Jack Dempsey did it with Mae West or whatever they did in them days. What it Mae West he went with? I forget now, but... That's what you do when the, you're the champ. Leon Spinks did it. But, uh, Leon Spinks, uh, he ain't got much win for him now, has he? I mean, he's got no driving license. He's got no teeth. Do you know what I mean? But, Leon Spinks beat Ali, didn't he? So, but, I don't think Andy Ruiz is going to be a Leon Spinks or a Buster Douglas, but, who knows? Maybe he's overachieved and he might just have one defence. He might have ten defences, but Al Heyman's going to want one champion, one face. You're going to see some arse licking now from Deontay Wilder. He's going to arse lick Ruiz. Hey, who's to say that Ruiz don't beat Wilder? D sorry, d yeah, who's to say that Ruiz don't beat Wilder? It's all exciting, but Eddie, I know you're watching, Eddie. Or you're... Or your arse licking staff are watching. Eddie, stop coming out, Eddie, on IFL interviews saying exciting times ahead. And do you, do you know what, Coogan? Do you know what? I'm excited for Joshua's future. I'm excited and looking to the future. We've got the Ruiz rematch. You keep telling us you've got this Ruiz rematch, Eddie. You fucking have not. You fucking knob. You keep telling us you've got this re, re, Ruiz rematch. You haven't got it. But why are you saying you're excited for the future for Joshua? Because he's a challenger and setbacks paved the way for comebacks and even Ali got beat. <laughs> Stronger, faster, quicker than the speeding bullets. No, honestly. Eddie, you're going to fucking cop it off me all week. You are going to cop it off me all week. On all you hardcores, I hope you're all sending tweets to Eddie Hearn, Mr. Bean, and all the rest of them. Because, let me tell you this, the knock-on effect from this is huge. Heads are going to roll. The cash cow is no more. Fans are fickle. Boxing fans are fickle. But this, this, this merry dance that we've been led now has been going on now for... It's been going on for seven years in a few weeks. Seven years we've had this merry dance. We've had the Olympics where he won three out of four by default. Joshua didn't have one, not one, not two, but three. He was like Ted fucking Rogers, three, two, one. He had three gifts at the Olympics. We've had the Charlie Martin gift, Brazil gift, Eric Molina gift, the life and death with, life and death with a guy in his 42nd year, the Tackham late replacement, the Parker, the Tackham stoppage with dodgy ref, the ref that won't let Parker go to work a dodgy ref in England again. Do you know what I mean? We've had all that. We've had Povetkin in his 40th year, life and death for a few rounds, we've had all that, and now we've had this, it came home to roost, it came home to roost, and now you're going to have the blame game, you're going to have people who are going to feel inferior, they're going to feel that they need to start acting really odd around Joshua, because when the champ gets beat, people around that person, they act very odd. They feel like they have to start doing something a little bit different to, to remain with the champ. Because the champ will want to be on his own now. And then all them people that are getting high fives. Every time you see Joshua, he's doing high fives. High five. Yeah, man. It's a fight. It's a fight. Stay humble. Be humble. Stay strong and all that fucking shit. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. That's it. He got that one off an Arnold Schwarzenegger video, didn't he? 
Stay hungry or be humble, all that load of crap. Been feeding us. Do Listen, they've had a conveyor belt uh, up here at the EIS, right? It's a fucking conveyor belt down here. You've got McCracken. He's in Eddie Earns here. That guy there's going to go all the way. That guy there doesn't even turn up for training on time. You know, like the Frankie Gavins and people like that. I'm not saying that Frankie in unprofessional because I'm a massive Frankie Gavin fan, but. You know, anything that you do as an amateur up there at the EIS, McCracken and all them are watching. It's a business. You know, that Lawrence O'Cole is up there, he was training with Joshua. Joshua had some rough sparring sessions with him, so Joshua, let me tell you this, he'll be like, I'm signing him because he sparred him. So he's the real deal of Lawrence O'Cole. He, he might have an horrible style, but he'll do well him at every weight, and he'll fancy his chances against Joshua and him. Lawrence Acoli, who's to say Lawrence Acoli won't ice? Ice. Who's to say Lawrence Acoli will not ice? Joshua, shout out Lawrence Acoli. Nicola, ping. Put a picture up of Lawrence Acoli in corner, Nick. When I go ping, or when I go like that, Nicola, with my finger, it means I want a picture of the person I've just been talking about. Or do I have to send you a memo? I'm just messing with you, but that's what's going to happen, I'm telling you now. They've had a conveyor belt up here, by the way, if I hadn't told you that before. They've had the good run, haven't they? The good days, they've had them all. The conveyor belt up here, Robert McCracken's been there ten year. Been up there ten year. McCracken's been up there since Terry Edwards left, right? After 2008, Beijing Olympics. They had Frankie Gavin, he didn't make weight. There were other things going on in camp. I mean, there's a story doing rounds. Billy Joe Saunders probably can tell you this a bit better. Billy Joe Saunders and Frankie Gavin down on this road down here in Attercliff. I don't think drink were involved, but I think Billy got in this car and he let rip in it. I don't know what car it was, but I have seen Billy drive around here in Lamborghinis and all sorts, fast golfs and BMs and lot. But well, the story has it, the legendary story around here, Billy Joe Saunders is supposed to have hit 100 mile an hour on Attercliffe. As you go down by the cinema and McDonald's and all that, and down to EAS, yes, Billy's supposed to have booted it in a car. Him and Frankie Gavin are supposed to have hit 100 mile an hour before Meadow Wall. Police have got Bill and he's got done. I don't know if they got locked up or not, I don't, I'm not sure, but something happened and he got back to... Uh, the EIS, the GB team. So I think that uh, probably they said that there was a lack of discipline in the 2008 team. So maybe McCracken came in because he's obviously he's not going to rock the boat in here. And, you know, he's he's a disciplinarian. He, he don't even go out when fighters do the runs. He believes that your fighter should do the run on your own. I know that because Carl Froch told me. So. But it is what it is, isn't it? McCracken's been there 10 years. So Eddie Hearn, when he signed Frotch, he's been going up there. He was working his ticket 10 years ago, Eddie Hearn. When did he get, when did he get Frotch? He got Frotch, didn't he? 2000 and... He got Frotch round about Christmas, didn't he? 2010, January 2011. So Eddie Hearn, well, have been up there, probably... Eddie Hearn's been putting the moves up there at the EAS for eight years. So he'll have seen your Callum Smiths, your Joshuas, Savannah Marshall, Nicola Adams, Tom Stokers. He'll have, he'll have seen every single one of them up there. And he'll have been asking people, what about that fighter there? Is he any good? Your Cal Yapais. I mean, jo Eddie Hearn's, right? I'm getting, I'm getting excited here, but Eddie Hearn has had four world champions from debut. Four. Joshua, Cal Yafai, Charlie Edwards, and Callum Smith. They're the only four world champions that Eddie Hearn has had from debut. Only four. And where do them four world champions come from? Where? The EIS. Down here. And who's the head of the EIS? Robert McCracken. How did Eddie Hearn meet Robert McCracken? Probably met him through Frotch. The EIS is down here.
Four world champions from debut. How many had his dad had up to that from debut? And Barry Hearn started in 1986-87. Started his boxing. His third show with Joe Bugner in 87. He did two shows, joint shows with Mickey Duff, working with Mickey Duff. So 86-87 is getting into boxing, Barry Hearn. He's had one world champion. One! From all that from all that time up to Eddie taking over in 2000 and were it 10 2009-2010 when Eddie started slinking into boxing so in all that time Barry Hearn has had one one world champion Herbie Hyde Nicola Ping Herbie Hyde one world champion eh one world champion unbelievable from debut so where's Eddie Hearn got all his world champions from? From basically boy, boxers that were jumping ship because they thought the grass were greener. The grass has been greener though, hasn't it really? It was greener for Frotch, wasn't it? But it ain't always greener. So, but as he delivered? Kel Brook. Kel Brook jumped ship, didn't he? As he delivered for Kel Brook. Kel Brook were number one mandatory for Manny Pacquiao. Did Eddie deliver for him? Did Eddie deliver the Pacquiao fight for Kel Brook? No. He was number one as well, mandatory WBO. Did he deliver for Kel Brook with Amir Khan? No. Has he delivered for Callum Smith, a world champion? No. Has he delivered for Boatsy? Yeah, I think he's doing well for Boatsy. He's coming along in, in right, right. He's, he's still a novice, isn't he? Will we see Boatsy against Callum Smith? I don't think Boatsy and Callum Smith will fight, but I think that's the only fight for Callum Smith now. He needs to move up and fight Boatsy. They'll fight down the line then, let me tell you. They will fight. They will fight down the line. So, do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, isn't it? So... It is, it is what it is, but I'm just glad that Joshua got beat. I'm going to go on record, like I said in the other video, I'm glad he got beat. I'm glad he got beat. So... Hello? Michelle's got it. So, it is what it is, what it is isn't it? Michelle. It is what it is, and what what can you do? What can you do? But like I said, they've had it fucking too good them up there, haven't they? <laughs> Dennis Weez, uh, Vitalix. I put if I have some of them, will my hair grow back? No. Uh, it is what it is, in it, I suppose. Uh, it is what it is. It, it, listen, you know when you've got hangers on, right? Hanging around you. These people are like leeches. They're like leeches. People like Clinton Woods up there who fought everybody. They never had hangers on. They had the mates who they knocked about with. They keep themselves grounded. Clinton's set up for life. He's a millionaire. But he's grounded. There's pictures of Clinton all over in here. Do you know what I mean? Grounded. Look at Jamie McDonnell here. He's not grounded, is he? He's spending money willy-nilly, bless him. He's not grounded, though, is he? Did he get thrown under a bus? Problem De 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 Eddie had with him, where well, he doesn't sell a ticket, does he? But where's he going now, Jamie McDonnell? He's not going nowhere. Because he's had good money, he's not going to come back to f for fighting for 50 grand, is he? And where can you get him a 50 grand fight now if you're not going to put him on Sky? He's not going to fight for chump change when he's been getting over a million dollars a fight, is he? So as far as I'm concerned, it's all doom and gloom for Eddie Earn, And I'm glad. I'm a, if, does that make me a hater saying I'm glad? It's business, isn't it? Listen, you see him there, Jamie McDonnell. When he sneakily stabbed my good friend... Dennis Hobson in the back and went to Eddie Earn like the sneak that he is. Jamie, I know you're watching, you're a sneaky fucking con. Right? When he stabbed Dennis in the back after coming here.
to this office, to this office, on the back of two defeats.